P. Diddy wins his case. Well, he gets it overturned. Let's talk about it. This is Fresh Hair Pop Opinion with your guy Alize. Don't forget to subscribe. So, yes, P. Diddy locked up in the NY Detention Center. Notoriously known for rats, bad food, and a lot of people getting hurt. He's had his bail conditions denied. He's had some good news. The case just recently where he lost a $100 million lawsuit to a guy called Derek Lee Cardello Smith. He's an inmate that has pretty much got a reputation of filing lawsuits multiple to different people. And basically because Diddy and his team didn't actually respond to him and his legal team, he won the judgment. And apparently, yeah, like I said, it was about a hundred million. He alleged that Diddy inappropriately touched him in 1997 at a Detroit party. I mean, that's going back a long time. But like I said, it's been overturned because the judge said him and his legal team failed to serve the lawsuits according to Michigan law. So basically the case will go forward like a normal lawsuit again. And a lot of legal experts expect that Diddy and his legal team will file for a dismissal as the alleged crime happened over 26 years ago. Obviously something like murder, there's no time limit on that, but this definitely does. So it will probably be dismissed anyway. So we can kind of call this Diddy's first real victory after all these multiple lawsuits he's facing. Cause last time I checked, he had about 10 on the table, 10 lawsuits. Can you imagine that? And that's not including the Fed case he's actually going through right now, which is obviously the main major legal woes he's facing. But yeah, that's it. Diddy judgment overturned, 100 million back in his pocket. Is the pressure getting to P. Diddy? Conflicting reports coming out. So yes, Diddy, 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 where are you? Okay, let's get serious. P. Diddy apparently is not eating in federal detention. There's talks of a hunger strike. There's talks of depression. There's talks of narcotics withdrawals. It's all talk. As we do know, he was put under self-harm surveillance when he entered the detention center. So people felt like he might self-harm, but that's not the case. Cause he is high profile, Diddy was placed on that surveillance immediately. Obviously he's a big person. The facility will not want him harming himself or anything to happen to him from another inmate cause it just wouldn't be a good look. But he's also not eating apparently because he feels that somebody may try and do something to him. Of course, we've heard reports that he has video footage of a lot of high profile, successful people doing some very embarrassing, maybe incriminating things. And he might be giving up information to the feds as we speak. So that's the rumor someone's trying to end Diddy by putting poison in his food. But you're thinking, hey, how can this happen? He's a high profile guy in a secluded, secure place under surveillance. But hey, these prison guards, they're not getting paid so much. One of these big powerful rich people say hey i'll slip this money in your pocket you do me this little favor and i do you a little favor and then it's done but the less sensationalized reason is that the food just ain't good it's not the michelin style that diddy's used to former inmate larry levine is speaking about it too saying how the food won't get to diddy until it's passed through a whole bunch of other departments so he gets it and it's cold and who likes cold food not me that's for sure but there's also rumors that Diddy doesn't have just a standard you get what you're fed kind of thing. He's given an array of choices and that's because he's, he's not with general population. He's in a specific facility. We're also hearing that his mental state is great from his attorney. But really, how can it be great? The guy's gone from spending $10,000 per night in the hotel where he was staying at to a cell with rats and rodents running around facing at least 12 to 15 years and a potential life in prison. And obviously there was reports that there was a illegal substance found in his hotel room allegedly when he was picked up. So this guy was really a user, allegedly, right up until arrest, which is kind of crazy because if you think you're gonna get arrested anytime soon, and that's why he came to New York in the first place, you would imagine he tried to clean up his act prior to being arrested. Maybe the lawyer just got in his head that he'd be released on bail. That he didn't really feel like kicking any habit he apparently had. But you know what? Obviously Diddy is the biggest news in the news right now. And a lot of people are making jokes, making videos, 
and all that. But at the end of the day, this man is still a man. I'm sure he wasn't as bad as media is trying to put him out as. He had his flaws and obviously liked his freak-offs. But he's got kids out there. I think he even has a little baby, like a two-year-old or something like that. So it's just not a good look and it's a bad situation for everybody involved. 50 Cent Clowns Diddy again. Man, just when you thought he was taking his foot off his neck. So, yes, 50 is back at it. Fresh off the news that Diddy may be not eating in federal detention after reportedly being in condition with rats running around his cell, 50 has given him another reason not to eat. He posted this on Instagram saying, 50 Cent sets Diddy abuse allegations docu-series at Netflix. It's a complex narrative spanning decades. And he put the caption, I've been telling y'all about all this weird-ish. I don't do no puppy parties. You don't believe me, but I bet you believe me now. So this thing is really happening. 50's really gonna do a docu-series. I thought this was all cap. I thought he was just really joking. I mean, it makes sense that he does do it. He's got that whole G in his studios. There's no point in having a production and a film location if you ain't gonna use it. And he's been the loudest voice dissing Diddy anyway, so it would make sense. And that would break records for sure. He also posted this, Diddy Oil, obviously on play or Johnson's Baby Oil, and obviously a play because Diddy's home was stacked with allegedly over a thousand bottles of baby oil. And then 50 puts the caption, coming soon, lol. Now this is the most active 50's been about Diddy since he's been arrested. He said like one or two things in the last week, but generally he's been pretty quiet on the Diddy situation. I thought he was feeling sympathy for the man. Now he's been actually locked up. But then you gotta remember, this is 50 Cent. He doesn't have a conscience. If he really does this docu-series, I ain't gonna lie. As much as I kind of feel for Diddy, going from million dollar lifestyle to rats running around, I'll watch this series. I'll be there front row center. And we gotta have some level, it gotta be a line you can't cross on the internet. But right? it gotta be something we say, okay, this is off limits. Cause as a man, I got kids. There's been a reaction to the Kim Porter book revealing all about Diddy. Let's talk about it. So yes, there is a fake Kim Porter book out there, people. It's out there to be bought. I suggest don't buy it. It's fake. Why would you want it? It was basically marketed as if this is Kim Porter's words that she wrote before she actually passed away. There's meant to be details about her, obviously, and a lot of details about our guy Diddy. Confirming a lot of details about him, what we've heard in the news and the media, and a lot more. And as you can imagine in a fake book, a lot of the stories are sensationalized to the max. And obviously Kim Porter who passed away from pneumonia many years ago, people are kind of putting together that Diddy had something to do with that, which is totally baseless. But here's a statement from her kids that they put together in reaction to this controversial book. We have seen so many hurtful and false rumors circulating about our parents, Kim Porter and Sean Combs' relationship, as well as about our mom's tragic passing that we feel the need to speak out. Claims that our mom wrote a book are simply untrue. She did not, and anyone claiming to have a manuscript is misrepresenting themselves. Please understand that any so-called friend speaking on behalf of our mom or her family is not a friend, nor do they have her best interest at heart. Our lives were shattered when we lost our mother. She was our world, and nothing has been the same since she passed. While it has been incredibly difficult to reconcile how she could be taken from us so soon, the cause of her death has long been established. There was no foul play. Grief is a lifelong process and we ask that everyone respects our request for peace as we continue to cope with her loss every day. Yeah fam, well written and well said. And my son also had a few words to say about the situation. I'm saying on this internet, can we have some integrity for the babies though? Cause they mother lost their life, they lost their mother already. Their father's facing prison, facing a life in jail. They don't have no parents. And you re-traumatizing these babies that ain't even true pictures of their mother and voices that ain't even true and you know and you don't care that these babies got to deal with that that's not real to me and i'm just saying as men as women of any level of integrity 
right? Let's 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 refrain from that. The rest of it you want to do, it ain't my cup of tea, it ain't how I move. Cool. Do that. Do all the hate puppy shit, but when you start doing it with the babies, right? When you start doing when you start they mothers on there, these these twin girls and the men and the boys, like when you start to do that, that you traumatizing these kids, they ain't got nothing to do with what you're talking about. It just ain't real. And we got to have some level. It got to be a line you can't cross on the internet. Right? It got to be something that we say, okay, this is off limits. Because as a man, I got kids. Right? And I, I wouldn't want some new like that to my kids. I just want my, I wouldn't want my kids to be traumatized about something that ain't even real. Right? I, would, I wouldn't want to float, have shit floating that I can't verify. Nobody I know in the world could verify. I'm just reposting and regurgitating that ain't real. And I'm traumatizing these babies. These babies got to deal with a lot of shit. Like, they still going to school and all that. And you putting out like that to the universe. So I'm just saying, once again, I don't give a fuck how you care, feel about Puff. Whatever you want to say about Puff, that's you. You're a man, woman, whatever you want to do. But I don't think that's any ethics, any morals, any, any type of anything to put that woman up there with a fake book and fake voices and traumatize them babies, man. That's just my opinion. But one thing I want to know is how somebody can write a book portraying that it's real at a time like this when these individuals have lost their father who's going through a real crazy time and obviously their mum has actually passed away. It's very tasteless and there's got to be some way that they can sue the individual. But I can imagine for obvious reasons suing somebody right now is not on the top of their priorities. But I want to know what you think. Leave a comment below, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. This is Fresh Hip Hop Opinion. Peace and love.